Hi, welcome. I'm going to basically the purpose of this video is to show how to move bulk items. OK, and I'll do a little bit more explaining on what that is in a sense in a little bit here. I want to do a little bit of um, sort of like navigation. I want to know where we are in the project and everything here. So I am in this project here. OK, you see these breadcrumbs here. I'm in this particular project right now. It's the one that I've decided to set up for for my homeschool. And then over here, and I did set up as a scrum, run it as a scrum project. And also, um, so this particular view that I'm in, I'm in the list view right now. Um, but there's timeline, there's backlog, active sprints, because I wanted to run it as sprints. And then there's also reports. I don't currently have much of this working right now. We have not started school. We will start Monday. Hopefully, by the grace of God, we will soon. So here I'm in the list. And what happened, I guess I can just give you, I'm going to try to be as brief as possible. When I originally set up this project, I decided to enter all my data. I thought I understood the, the workflow. And I, and I thought I understood how epics and stories and subtasks work. But I didn't. And so when I set this up, I set it up with the, these is epics. So my kids work, school work is epic. And then under there, so the parent or the child's under the epic. And what can now, from a hierarchical standpoint, it could be a story, it could be, um, and actually, I'm going to click this right here because this child island will let us know. It may take a minute for this to bring up, come up. But let's click this button right here to add a child child item to this epic. Okay. Now, I'm going over here. I can add a story, a task, a bug, assignment, subject. Now, this assignment and subject are new. They're new. They're totally new. I created these item types or excuse me, these issue types. But right out of the box, when I click the template, whatever template I use, I don't even remember which exactly what exact template I did use. But this is a scrum uh, or sprint or something like that. Maybe I'll figure that out and include that in another video. But so I created these two. OK, now, but that's an epic. However. That, of course would allow me to create these, what I call now subjects. So the icons, I try to make the icons just so I, now we just have to remember, okay, this is the subject icon. This is the assignment icon, the question mark assignment. Like I'm questioning an assignment. I just came up with that idea, but I, I think you can probably come up with your own, own um, avatar images for the item, for the issue types. So if I click a add here, add a child item for the one of the items for items for um child item the choice i have is subtask okay subtask and if i click on this to see if i have other options i do not okay i do not have anything but subtask now I didn't think that was a big deal at the time until I went to add items or issues into my sprint for sprint one. And when I tried to, it says that subtasks cannot be added in a sprint. So imagine how depressing that was <laughs> because first of all, I had did I had pretty much entered all of their information in here. Okay, so that was crazy. So, and then I was individually converting. I found out how to switch it. And I was converting each one of these one by one. And 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 I'm like, it had to be done, right? I'm, I'm like, there's no way around it. But I don't know, something had happened. I was clicking around, which is good, right? The more you use a tool, the more you start learning about it. And I honestly did not try to go on Google or anything and try to find out how can I take bulk items and get it done. So 
here we are. Instead of individually going in each one of these and moving them to or converting them to an issues type, I had, I discovered this. I discovered I could actually open up the issue, in this case, the subject, and now I can do bulk edit. Okay, on these subtask. Now, here I am. I'm waiting for the wizard to come up for me to do this. I'm going to select all of these. The I'm going to mention something about the name of these act of my summary, okay? And do notice too that this key here, the key is unique every item on the board is has a unique key even the project itself has a unique key everything has a unique key so you'll be able to use you know uh query things or whatever right in for the reports so i'm gonna click next everything has a unique identifier okay a unique key here you do have options for the this bulk action you can edit issues move issues transition those issues so meaning i want to okay so edit means you just the issue itself there's some fills that are in there that are that you want to instead of having the individual go, individually going to each one and changing that value like for instance assigned to or whatever you don't have to worry about that i can actually here edit the issues and do that in this case i'm going to move you can transition so let's say it's in the to do column, I want to go ahead and just bulkly put them in progress. Boom, I can do that. I don't know why I would want to do that, but there's a possibility of that being a thing. And I I'm thinking of a thinking of a use case now. So let's say the first day of school with my kids, um, with their subjects for that for that day, they can basically say, Oh, I'm gonna work on these five subjects. Go ahead and click those five items and do a bulk action on it delete issues yes that that would be necessary if i needed to delete issues watch issues here watch all all the select issues and the person that reported it the reporter or the person that the author of the issue already is watching the issue but if you need other people to watch like if i just want to bulkly have my kids be watching all of their issues or if i wanted to watch watch every issue i can see what comments are at it i'll get an email with that or stop watching because i'm like whoa dude i made a mistake i'm getting way too email too much email let me take that off and not do that any longer so apparently this video is not just for um moving issues but it looks like i wanted to con kind of say a little bit more so here this particular i'm moving um i'm I'm not moving the project you could it looks like you can move the project here but here what i actually i'm going to do here is i'm just going to move it to an assignment it needs to be assignment because these are the assignments and i'm gonna go ahead and be honest with you Apply this mapping for all your other issue types. Yeah, I don't know what that means. I, I sort of want to try it and see what happens. But I'm happy. Well, if it would move all my subtasks that are that's in this project and move it, um, something happened. And I think... And I can't go back. It's, it's, it chose Epic. I do not want Epic. So I'm going to have to, yeah, this is the first time this happened to me. I've, I've moved a lot today, but let's see if it'll let me go back to step two. I doubt it. I may have to start over and that's okay. Cause this is not a committed change. So let's go here. And I thought I, I thought I closed choose assignment but apparently not so assignment and click next let's wait for it to kind of get there what's up
Okay, it looks like I this assignment now. So let's click next. And next. Okay, so confirmation here. So the target project, which did not change in this case, in target issue type. We can go ahead and click confirm that we do want these changes to happen. Now, there is another step I need to do. There may be actually three steps I need to do, but I'm only going to show one more step to kind of complete this circle. Okay. Now, since I've moved the from the this issue from subtask to now assignments issue, it no longer is tied to a parent issue. Okay. Because the parent issue was something else, right? It was the the um I created the subtask for the under the subject and you can have a that issue type as a child item. Okay, I hope that makes sense, right? I can't have the child item The only child item I can have for a subject or story or bug is a subtask, okay? Because how, how the hierarchy works, okay? Somehow I got here. That's okay. We're going to we wanna work our way back to the project using our, our nifty little side menu here on the side here. And of course, there's a lot of ways to get here to, to the project here. And I, I want to go to list. List, I like lists. It's, it's sort of clean. It just lists everything. They're not like in the little categories. And one of the things about the list, if I ever can get there, if I wanted to, I could do a quick filter here. And I don't know if this is by default. So if I want to just have... Actually, the quick filter is not on. So let me click more here. I don't know why quick filter is not on. I thought I had it on. Okay, maybe not. Maybe the list doesn't have it. Okay, maybe that's that's the issue here. That in this particular view, this doesn't work. And I think that's correct. Okay, actually, there is a little filter going on here. So, oh yeah, I'm showing what's assigned to me. I can show what's assigned to AJ for this person right here. I would assume it, it will eventually click to that person. Cause see the little filter there? It's so here now, yeah, I'm showing everything that's assigned to him. So I can see each person assigned here, which I which I don't want any filters. Okay. So the filter of there's two filters applied. And I don't really want any filters applied. I just want the group. And actually to, to probably do that is just probably either click on a list here and get it back to the regular view or something like that, right? This highlight right here is just saying I'm the person logged in. This is a way to see the person that's logged in here. Of course, I can see here as well. And this is important if you if people are sharing a computer. I do share this computer with my almost 10-year-old. And okay, so now you notice here that these assignments are right here on the same level as the epic and i don't want that so i'm going to select all of these now the the reason why i'm selecting all of the all of these is going to be evident as soon as you see what i'm doing here now i'm going to unselect these three instead of click 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 you know selecting these because i don't know if it allow me to select one and then use a shift key maybe i should try that so let's do this. I want to do it again. So let's unselect. We might as well, right? We're we're in training. This is a training thing. But you would think I would have already thought about this. So I'm going to start here and select the first one. And then I'm going to hold down my shift key and try to select this last one. And see what happens. Okay. It doesn't seem to be working oh it does okay 
Yeah. So either you can do what I did, right? And have to click one, two, three, four times or one, two times. Okay. It's up to you. Both of these work. Now, one of the things I don't like about this here, art unit four, um, this is Elise Elizabeth's. Okay. I need to, before I actually, if it'll let me do it, I don't even know if it's going to let me do it or not. Probably not. So let me go ahead and unselect right quick. Where is it going to let me do it? Oh, it's going to let me do it. Sweet. Okay. I need a little bit more information here. So I need a little bit more information here because art unit, this is not helpful, right? Especially with the sim simple reason that both of my kids are taking. So life pack. Um, Okay, this is where I'm going to need to add just a little bit more. And maybe I didn't actually actually have to do that part, but I'll see EA. So I'm just putting her initials. Now, of course, her initials are just E here. But I'm, I'm putting EA because I want to. Okay, mine is this EF. Hers could be e, EA. His is AF and hers is MS, right? Um, I feel like she need more than, I think she need more than two letters. So here we are. I mean, more than one letter. So here, here I am making an executive decision here as a proxy for the product owner, right? To kind of, okay, now I'm just working on space in here. Okay. So, so it's allowed me to do this. This here. I'm going to pause this and finish this up and then I will come back and we will do the next step. Okay, I have gotten them all updated. So here it has this, this um, I'm going to call it a submenu down here. Okay, or dialogue, right? Actions dialogue. I'm going to call it actions dialogue. I don't know what they call it. So I have them selected. It lets me know I have seven issues selected and I have options. I can delete them from here. Bulk delete, right? which I don't want to do here. Copy to clipboard. Copy to clipboard. All it does is just copy to the clipboard. It's text, okay? So helpful for something. I'm not sure. Um, so let's go to edit here. Now, it takes a second or two to come up. So as it comes up, there are a couple of things you can do here from a bulk standpoint. Assignee, they're already assigned to her. If they were not assigned to her, maybe I would just go ahead and assign them to her here, right? It could have been unassigned, right? But it's not. It's cool. It's good to go. We don't have due dates here. Nor would I want to put the same due date on all of these anyway. Labels. I'm not using labels. I'm not even sure exactly what's the best use case for labels yet. Okay. I did create some tags before. I felt like they may be helpful, but, and I still may end up creating some of those tags because the tags help with filtering. Labels can also help with filtering. Um, but what are the best use case for labels and for tags? I have no idea at this point that's in the game. And that may be something that I need to figure out. And if I ever get to know what that is, maybe I will do a video about that. Oh, here we go. So this is hers. Okay. So we put it under her work here. And yeah, I don't know why it's doing this. It's taking so long. It usually doesn't take that long. And then priority. All of our priority priorities are set to medium here. This is what medium looks like. So let's go ahead here. I don't want to send an email. If I did, if there was a need to, to send an email, that would be cool. This would be information where I need to maybe disseminate out, right? But in this case, yeah. Everybody already knows that I'm, I'm doing this and it needs to be done. So no big deal. Okay. So now, if you look here, 
it's it tells you to keep this window open until all of it's completed until it's finished and here in this case it says that it it has completed it there looks like the there looks like there's a little small delay here with this one here still sitting here okay it's still sitting there um and now I'm going to close this box up. I don't need it anymore. And sometimes this box will disappear, but I'm going to go ahead and close it. Okay, so that's it. That is the simple bulk selecting requests, you know, items or whatever, and doing a little bit of manipulation there. Um, yeah, they have been very helpful. Maybe I can talk about the priority what, since I'm here, since I brought it up, right? So... Priorities for them, there is no need for priorities at all. I don't think at this point in time, unless there was just so much work and priority, let's say for instance, that I can't even think of a use case right now, but you see there's medium, which is the, is what comes pretty much default, I guess. All of mine just came up medium, highest, high, low, and lowest. So of course these are like, priorities of what order things need to be worked and I don't want to in this case I don't need to track priorities because we do see chapter one chapter two chapter three we already we, it's already built in the actual name has the, that type of priority if we needed to track priority which we do not so I'm cool with the medium I'm really cool with it and one of the things I think is pretty cool about I mean, if you had those highest, highest or whatever things, it will, it would probably make sense in the context of a Kanban that you like, I got to get these highest things out. But in this case with schoolwork, I don't think it's necessary unless you get to a point where they're, they have maybe electives or something they have on the board that's less low priority, something that they want to get done, but it's low. They can put it low or something that needs to be done. Like let's say they are they needed to do um, a CPR class because they need to renew it for their job or something like that. If they want to track it on there, they can. They don't have to, of course. It's not like you want to track your whole life on a board, okay? <laughs> on, a, on a board, right? But um, but yeah, I don't, in our case, I don't see a need for the priority. And with that said, probably the best thing to do with these columns is if if they're not going to be needed in this list view, it may not even need to be here. Now, this list view is not necessarily, I don't really worry about trying to uh, revamp this, but I may create, a, um, may create my own board that has what the view that we want to do, right? Or whatever, the quick filters and stuff like that, create my own and then have what we need, what we need to be tracking. And then the same thing with reports, when I add those different kind of reports that we need to kind of look at, I think it's going to be pretty cool. But as right now, we have not started yet. So, but this is, I just want to sh be, have a quick video to kind of show this, these, these um, bulk item changes. And hopefully there will be more other videos to come. Thanks. Thanks for watching. And please leave comments. Uh, any questions or you've had use case that you wanted to use um, with that, that you think would be helpful. And I do appreciate that. And so hopefully you have a good, so bye.